Now we move on to chapter three, normal distribution. If I think one of the most powerful distribution is statistic there, there is. Um, well, for many reasons. First of all, because it's the bell curve shape. And the second reason we're gonna um, learn about later because of the central limit theorem. Now, given the histogram, here is the histogram um, of a uh, test vocabulary score in one of the Iowa elementary middle school. So as you can see, the histogram is symmetric, right? roughly symmetric. Motels fall off smoothly from a single center peak. There is no large gap or obvious outlier. Right? So it's pretty good histogram. Now, in order to, in order to, by the area of this histogram, uh, by the way, when it's in statistic area mean probability, right? In order to find the area of the histogram, what would I do? Area, area, what are the histogram made of? Rectangles, you know how to calculate the rectangles area, right? Yeah, you calculate each of the rectangle area of each of the rectangle you add them up. Right? So you got the area of the whole histogram. Uh, of course, that is is a cubism and it's just not efficient way to do it. One way to do it is we're gonna we're gonna use the density curves. Say if I'm gonna I'm gonna draw a curve that kind of hugging around the histogram. How do I come up with this curve? Well, one way I can do is that I can I can rescale my histogram. I can rescale my histogram for the, by, by the vertical scale, right? For the lower one, I can make it a little bit higher. For the higher one, I can make it a little bit lower, right? <clears throat> there you have your density curve. Like that, it kind of smooth out like that on the right picture. Now, what is the density curve? Um, the density curve describes the overall pattern of the distribution. Okay. Um, you're not gonna ask to draw histogram all the time, right? It's a little bunch of rectangular shape. It's, it's not efficient. Okay. So we're gonna use the density curve. The density curve, where's my pen? The density, density curve tell you the overall pattern of the distribution. is always on or above the horizontal axis. And it has the area exactly one, 100%. You can have a normal density curve look like that, or you can have a, a right skew, a left skew, or you can have a uniform. The first curve we're gonna talk about is the uniform distribution. Sometimes people call it rectangular distribution because of the shape. But I, I'm gonna call it just uniform, okay? I'm gonna call it uniform distribution. Um, so let me grab it, let me grab real quick, just real quick like that. <clears throat> The range is from A to B. If the range of uniform variable is from A to B, so here's the range from A to B. Then the probab probability density function, PDF, PDF, is one over B minus A. So here is one over B minus A, and AB will be given, AB will be given. 
the mean, as you can see, the mean and the median are the same, right? Right in the center. The mean and the median of the uniform variable are right at the middle. That's mu. Also, well, I'm just gonna say mu. The formulation we represent the mean is so the mean. Another notation for the 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 mean is e of x. E stands for expected values. X is the random variable. So the expected value of the random variable equal the population mean, which is. Well, you want to calculate the mean, which is halfway across. You add them up, divided by two, right? That formula is no brainer. Does anyone know how? Can it, can someone recall me what is mu again? It's a Greek letter. So mu is mu again. Yes, population mean, right? Remember, if it's Greek letter, it's gotta be population, right? Um, what does sample mean? What's the notation for sample mean? Yeah. An X bar, right, X bar. Remember though, popul population. You gotta remember though, because it come up a lot. It's gonna come up a lot. <clears throat> and here the ex it's called the expected value. And if I ask you to calculate the expected value, you I want to use this notation, D2. You're gonna write those two out. It's part of the rubric. <clears throat> the distribution now, if I ask you can represent the distribution of a uniform um, uniform distribution in notation, you would do like this. U stand for uniform. Someone else, maybe I'll use yellow. And a, B, A, comma, B, and of course you plug in what is A, what is B on the problem. <clears throat> you feel better when I introduce you to the um, example? <clears throat> now, um, here the uniform distribution of the accident on a bike path. Examination of a location of accident on a level 10 mile bike path show that they occur uniformly along the length of the path. So um, let me ask you, what, the, what is the distribution here with the notation here? You, very good, right? On the exam, I give you a little box on top of the, on top of the, the density curve, you're supposed to fill it in. And that way you fill it in. Right? The, the, the notation of the distribution. <clears throat> my A will be zero. Right. My B will be 10. What is the probability um, density function PDF? Yeah, which is 0.1 right there. They gave it to you, right? That's what does it come from? That's from the PDF. Yes. What is the yellow type? U, sorry. Yeah, make, 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 make it a little bit darker yellow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, good? That's good? Okay. <clears throat> That's the notation for the distribution of the uniform distribution. <clears throat> Based on the model, question one, based on the model, what is the expected mile that the accident may occur on a 10 mile bike path? Provide appropriate simple value and units. Expected mile, what they asking for? What kind of notation they asking for here? Let me go back up to the slide that I explained in the uniform distribution. What notation are they asking for? Elimination method, right? 
do well not this right do they ask you for the green one pdf no right well you have pdf one over 10 minus zero um well the only thing you see is expected value right expected mile expected values so when you hear what is the expected mile what is the expected age what is the expected height that's your population means right so e of x e of x equal mu, they, they want appropriate symbol. So you, you're gonna write the all out. Equal, let me remind you the formula is A plus B divided by two. A is zero, B is 10 um, divided by two. So five, don't forget unit, five mile. Okay. What is the probability that accident occurred within zero mile and two mile? You gotta look at the picture. You, you cannot just do it without looking at the picture. So between zero and two, between zero and two, um, I'll use the blue. Between zero and two, that's between zero and two, right? Probability mean area under the curve. Can you calculate the area of that rectangle? Right. So P of X between zero and two, um, I, I, you know, remove the equal sign because it's, uh, it's continuous. P of X equals zero is, is zero. P of, X, P of X equal to a constant is zero because there's no area in the line, right? <laughs> The area in the curve between zero mile and two mile in Pacific, you write like that, and I do count that as your point. Um, in this case, because it's a uniform distribution, all you do is count is compute the area of the rectangle. What is the width? Two. What is the height? Yep. Mm -hmm. Two time. One over ten or point one doesn't matter. So uh, one fifth. One fifth is point two, right? Or better yet, twenty percent. I'll take all of all of those three. <clears throat> So the probability that, that you're gonna have an accident between zero mile and two mile is roughly 20%. Do you have any questions so far? This is a good place to ask. If you don't understand the uniform distribution, you can ask that too. So, so, yes. He says the 20% probability for an accident that occurred between zero and two miles. Zero and two miles. Yes. I'm just confused for like how do you know when it's asking you to do like which formula? Which formula? So um um so first of all it depends on practice. You practice a lot, you just kinda know. Um when you hear expect it, like the word expect it here. Then I know I'm looking for expected values, right? Okay. Expected mile, expected age, expected height, expected score, right? So uh, when you hear expect it, you wanna you want to do E of X. And E of X also represent the population mean. And each distribution have different formula. For uniform, this is their formula. Yes. Where did you get one over 10 from? Um, one over 10 is the probability, uh, the probability density function, PDF. Okay. One over B minus A. B is 10, A is 0. Very good, very good. I wanted to ask a question. In your other exam. <laughs> Um, are you okay about two and one? Yeah. Number three, what is the probability that accident occurred over six mile path? Over six miles. So go back to the picture, six mile. Draw a line. 
and sigma over sigma. So I'm going to say above or below six. Above, right? Over six miles. So we're going to shave above. And they want to know how many percentage. You calculate that rectangle area with the rectangle. <clears throat> Can someone tell me the notation the statistic P of what? Yeah. There's a random variable. You have to put an X in there. So P of X greater than six. Don't worry about the equal sign. If you accidentally put the equal here, um, it's fine. But um, but you don't ever do equal sign in continuous distribution. <clears throat> okay, someone tell me what you got. All right, so look at the picture. You draw whatever you draw, you look at it and you calculate the area of the rectangle. Um, the width is four, right? The width is four, between six and 10 is four. The height is the same everywhere. That's why uniform. So four times one tenth is two fifth. 20 divided by five is 0. 0.4 or 40%. So there are 40% chance that you, there's an accident or curve of over six mile path. <clears throat> okay, um, extra credit here for you. If you can answer this question correctly, I'll give you one point uh, extra credit on your exam, your next exam. Follow up question. What percentile does the value of six mile corresponding, correspond to for this distribution? Yeah, the, the percentile, those percent like Q1, Q2, Q3. No, Q1, Q2, Q3 is just the um the default uh -oh. percentile. Here you have to give me the exact from zero to 100%. Give me a number. Uh, yeah, from well, percentile from zero percent all the way to 100%, right? Um, very good. Why? Why not 40? People would say 40 because if they look at the picture, they look like 40% to me in that area that I, I highlighted in green. Why not 40? Very good, right? What the definition, definition of percentile? It's the area of at the value and below, right? And below. So, so even though they're asking that six miles, the percentile will be be 60%, not 40. Very good. Uh, I gotta get your name later. <laughs> 60%. Kind of lazy. <clears throat> Remember, I was in the race, I say I was 90% percentile. <laughs> but actually, I was like the bottom 10%. Um, <clears throat> So far, so good. Uniform distribution is not it's not hard. Trust me, it's not hard. Um, <clears throat> let, let me re re remind you about the these curves right here. If you have a normal curve, then the median and the mean are approximately the same, right? They approximately the same. If you have a right skew, sometimes they call that the positive skew, then the mean is going to be larger than the median. If you have a left skew, sometimes we call that the negative skew, the mean is less than the median. If it's easier for you to remember, always remember the means always being dragged to the direction of the tail. Right tail means to the right of the median, left tail means to the left of the median. It's helpful for your coming up quiz, quiz number two. X bar is greater than median and X bar less than median.
Now, let's talk about the normal curve, the famous, the famous curve. Um, all the undergrad statistic is really revolving around normal distribution. Yes. It's from chapter two as well. So normal distribution being described by two parameters, mu and sigma. Mu is, you know that, population mean. Sigma is population standard deviation, right? Remember last, last time we talked about standard deviation? Um, so let me highlight it here. Normal curve is completely described by giving its mean mu and its standard deviation sigma. Um, mu measure what? No, me what is it measured? Is it measured for the center or the spread? Mean, center, right? Center. The, the, the median and the mean measure the center. The, what, measure, what measure the spread? Standard deviation. Standard deviation, right. <clears throat> the mean of a normal distribution is at center of the symmetric normal curve. So the mean right in the middle. Just kind of like the uniform distribution. The mean is right in the middle. Either you, you are fat, a fat normal curve or a skinny normal curve, there's always the middle. Um, now, the standard deviation is gonna determine how spread your values are, right? If you have if you have a small standard deviation, that means many, many of your data points are close to the close to the mean value. That means you can have a skinny, a skinny normal curve, right? If if you you have a larger standard deviation, that means what? The air, that means you have a lot of data points that are far away from the mean, right? From the population mean, it's gonna spread out, right? There you're gonna have a um, larger curve <clears throat> that less concentrated above the mean. Okay. So if I would ask you compare the, the sigma between the two curve, you would say um, this sigma is bigger than this sigma. Right? More spread, I mean more spread. More spread out, I'll say it like that. Less spread out. So that mean, that mean the range, say here, the range I can go from, say from, from 80 to 100. Uh, here I can go from say 20 to 200, right? It's just, it, the data points are crazy. They can have very small data points and I have very large data points. The spread out is much, much larger. <clears throat> That's why we can always use IQR, right? In a, in a quartile range to calculate the spread as well. But it's not the, case with the normal curve. The normal curve, we only talk about standard deviation. All right, talk about, let's talk about population and sample. Um, this thing with population, population, I'll highlight in red, all the individual that we want the information for. Individuals. A lot of time we don't get we don't get to 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 um to analyze the information for many reasons. First of all, is um, impractical, right? It takes a lot of money and, um, and and time to survey all everybody. Right? Um, so another way we can do we can take sample, right? Take sample. Hence, statistic. Sample is a portion. A portion. 
a portion that is randomly, it has to be random, no bias, randomly, randomly picked from the population. <clears throat> so let me demonstrate with the picture. So here my population. I have a bunch of individual here. It could be people. It could be, um, you know, higher people, age of people. Or it could be something else. Um, and then for the for the sample, what I'm going to do, I'm going to randomly pick. So I may pick this guy. I'll pick this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy for my sample. So now I have a pool of little sample here. And I don't have to do one sample. I can do many samples. I can do this my sample number one, my sample number two, my sample number three, etc. <clears throat> Smaller pool. So here's sample one, sample two, all the way to sample n, right? sample two, etc. As many as you can afford. Now, you heard me talk about mu and x bar and all that. Um, these call the parameter of the population and um, statistics of the sample. So, so what represent the population? Maybe I'll say pop here. and standard deviation. Well, then we use mu for population, right? We use mu for population. The funny thing, you make sure you, you kind of elongate the, the left side a little bit. For the sample, we use X bar. Anyone remember what the variance for population? You know, let's do standard deviation. What's the, what's the standard deviation for population? Sigma, right? Uh, what's standard deviation for sample? It's easier than you think it would be. S, S, S. Remember, Roman is for sample, Greek is for, for population. Why Greek? Because it's mysterious. We don't know the population, but, but we can take sample. Uh, what about variance? If you forgot variance, that's okay. As long as you remember standard deviation, you should have variance. To calculate variance, what do we do? We square the standard deviation. So sigma square. Here should be S square. And we call those mu, sigma, square, and sigma, we call the parameter. Parameter. Parameters, yeah. And then for the sample, we call them statistic. Hand the word statistic. It's all deal, statistic is all deal with sample. <clears throat> so just terminology I want you to get familiar with. So when I say mu, when I say x bar, you know what I meant. I meant population or sample. Any question? Any question? It's a very slow paced lecture today, so please ask questions. <clears throat> All right, um, now there's an additional rule that allow us to take a look at a better frame of reference for the normal curve. It's called empirical rule. The empirical rule only apply if your, sh if your curve is the bell shape, only for bell shape curve. If it's right skew, left skew, um, it cannot be applied. 
And it's saying like this, 68. So let me, let me introduce this curve for you. Here I have a normal, beautiful, normal curve, right? Mu is at the center, right at the middle. See what color I use here in my notes. Mu at the center. Now, um, these stick yard here, that's the center deviation. So here, if I go one standard de standard deviation each way from the mu, here going to be one. So that'll be one. One standard deviation, so one sigma. Over here will be negative one sigma because you go to the left. And then if you go two, two standard deviation away from the mean, to the left, will be two sigma. The three will be what? Three sigma, negative three sigma. And eventually, and eventually, if you go do more four sigma, five sigma, eventually you're gonna cover the whole curve. Right. But let's talk about um let's talk about each of them. So remember standard deviation measure the spread of each data data point from the mean on average, right? So if I go each way from the mean like that, and it say roughly 68% of the observation fall in that range. Right. So right here, all of these here. That's sixty eight percent of the curve. If I go two standard deviation from the mean each way, It's say roughly 95% of all the observation fall in that range. And if I go three standard deviation each way, it's how many? 99.7. All the observation fall in that range. Sorry, 99.7, I know it's green, a little hard to see. If you do more, if you do more, if you do more standard deviation, eventually it's gonna cover the whole curve, which is 100%, right? But we don't need all that. In statistics, we stop at the third standard deviation right here. It's good enough for us. 99.7 is pretty good. <clears throat> um, some other book, they call that the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Oh, it's a mouthful. It's because empirical rule. So let me highlight what we have here. So 68%, that's in red. Or within one variation of the mean, either direction, right here. And then 95% within two standard deviation. And then the last one, 99.7% within three standard deviation. Go back here so you can take a look at the picture. <clears throat> I forgot to tell you what uh, the notation for the distribution of the normal curve. Once you're done drawing that, I'll, I'll ask, I'll come back. Um, mm -hmm. no. Normal curve, normal curve. Okay, normal curve right here. I forgot to write that thing. Um, the the I use dark. <coughs> Hopefully you can see. The notation for the distribution will be normal. New sigma. Now, if you standardize it. You don't have to know it right now, but if you standardize it,
if you don't understand it, it's fine. It's not your fault. We have not there yet. What I want to introduce it right now is standardized. It's going to be normal. The mu is going to be zero and the standard deviation is one. But we're going to learn about it later, next lecture. But right now, normal mu, mu comma sigma. Below is the model for random variable X, which represent the height of American males. What is the pro appropriate distribution with corresponding parameters? So what notation I'm using here? What they asking? Distribution, right? You can ask the distribution. What is the distribution meaning? Um, you want to know. And mu comma sigma what is mu here what does my population mean sixty nine right the one in right in the middle sixty nine right sixty nine what is the standard deviation yes yes how do I calculate that One standard deviation for mean, two standard deviation for mean, three standard deviation for mean. So one standard deviation will be what? Three, right? Three. Oh, that's the uniform. Yeah, this is normal. Everybody, everybody have their own. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so on the exam, make sure you're not confused between the distribution. That's three. That's one standard deviation from the mean. Right. Oh, pass again. Oh, at this rate, we're gonna get out early. <laughs> you're gonna get out early. Do you mind get out early, or you you wanna stay with me? <laughs> I still have another class to teach. I'm still to stay here till like eight o'clock tonight. But uh, um. Uh, hmm. I want, let's do this one together. This is our last problem. I want you to think about it because since we have so much time, think about what we do together. So first I want you to put in the distribution on the top here. On the exam, I give you the box like that. I mean, I want you to fill in the distribution. Rectangle, right. All right. <clears throat> and then you answer the question below. I'll walk around if you need help. I want you to fill in, I want you to fill in that normal curve like I did here with the empirical rule. Of course, instead of sigma, you're gonna replace sigma with number, right? And here they give you values. So tell me what is mu, what is one standard deviation, what the value one standard deviation away from the mean, two standard deviation away from the mean, etc. cetera. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. How does this exam? You can use the computer yeah. or draw it. I just put it. Just, oh. Oh, okay. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good to know. So I fill in that box. What what is the distribution? And and what? Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That is so cute. Your handwriting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I thought it was typing. No, it's like a yeah. yeah. I, I used to have beautiful handwriting yeah. until I like sign a lot of paper. And then, uh, and <laughs> Capital N, make sure you do capital N. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, if, if, uh, fill in. First of all, I want you to fill in that picture like this, right there, like that. But in, instead of sigma, I want numbers. Yes, yes. like that. So Correct. one sigma will be eight point seven. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Very good. Fill it in. So you can answer. Once you've got fill in, you can answer the question below. <clears throat> Who else is the athlete student here in this class? Raise your hand beside Jacob. Jacob, right? Jacob. Yeah. You understand now? Yeah. One standing deviation away, two standing deviation away. It looked like everybody got the, got the, the jig. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. That's right. Through. Very good. Very good. Now answer the the question. Now as you have it. So see what does sixty eight percent mean? One standard deviation away from the mean, right? So the 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 distribution will be normal. Make sure you do capital N. Okay. If lower N means sample size. So capital N mu is seven, standard deviation is 1.7, done. The mu is right in the middle, which is seven. One standard deviation from the mean, seven plus 1.7 is, yeah, 8.7. And then subtract 1.7 is 5.3, thank you. And do like that. And two standard deviation from the mean. So seven times seven plus what? Two times 1.7, right? Mm -hmm. Which is 10.4 and 3.6. You know, let me do it down here like this. Let me do it down here. 80, a, 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 let, me, let me explain it to you as well. About 80%, meaning you're going to be mu plus or minus one standard deviation, right? So mu is 7 plus and minus 1.7, which is you have what was it? 8.7 or 5.3 or, or end, 95%, um, that's mu plus or minus two sigma, right? And you plug it in, seven plus or minus two times 1.7, which is 10.4. Or uh, what else, 10.4 or 3.6. And then the last one, 99.7, mu plus or minus three sigma standard deviation. So seven plus three times 1.7, um, 1.9 and 12.1. So let me, let me fill out here. So, so this, this is 1.9, this is 12.1. <clears throat> so as you can see, three standard deviation is almost covered the whole curve. Right? 
about 68% of a college students typically, typically sleep between 5.3 and what? 8.7, right? 8.7 hours per night. About 95% of college students typically sleep between 3.6 and 10.4. Right there, 3.6, 10.4 right there. I, I, I wrote backwards, should have 3.6 come first. And then about 99.7% of college students typically sleep between 1.9, very good, 1.9, and 12.1 hours. Wow, oh, hours, oh my God. <laughs> so far, so good. That's empirical rule. That's one of the problem you practice to use empirical rules. Again, you only be able to use empirical rule when what? When your shape is normal, normal right? If it left skew, right skew, or uniform, you cannot use that. Suppose last night you slept 11 hours. How many standard deviations from the mean are you? Let's take a look at 11 hour. Where is it on the graph? 11 hour is roughly right here. So when you calculate, you know that. So that's 11 hours of sleep. You know that your standard deviation is going to be larger than two and less than three, right? Right? So let's calculate what the exact value of a standard deviation right at that purple dot. How do I do this? So I know that mu, um, mu, which is seven plus, I don't know what how many standard deviations, so I'm gonna call that number. N, letter N, you can call X if you like, time 1.7, that's giving me 11. If, if it wants a deviation, it's going to give you um, 8.7, right? So, but, but now it's giving me 11, so I don't know what it is. I call that N. Can you solve for N? One point seven N equal eleven minus seven is four. Divide both side by one point seven. Mm. Your value should be between two and three. Four divided by one point seven is. 2.35. Deviation away from the mean. I understand it now. <laughs> Wait for you to finish copying now. Do you understand this form, this equation? You gotta understand it though. Yes, right. It is from it from the empirical rule, right? If if I have mu plus um uh, two sigma equal what is that? Is it ten point four? Right. If it's ten point four, if you solve for sigma. Well, here is seven point the mu is seven. If you solve for sigma, it's gonna give you two, right? Two. Here, if you have eleven hour, you plug it in. I'm sorry, sigma is one point sigma is one point seven, and if you solve for n here, let me say n here, n is gonna be two. 
time is gonna be two. You gotta do the last one. I'll walk around, see how you do, and we'll be done. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, if you look at the graph, it makes sense. It's two point three five, right? Your standard deviation should be between two and three, right? Because that's eleven hours sleeping. If it's five hours, five hours. Where's five hours? Is right here. So your standard deviation is gonna be negative, right? Between between negative one and negative two, something like that. It's below the mean, so it's gonna be negative. Very, very good. <coughs> seven plus n times 1.7 equal five. 1.7 n equal Negative two, what's n equal? Negative one point seven two. Very good. Do you have any question before I adjourn? I'll stay here um, till class done. You get a question? I'll be here. So homework two, I extend it until tonight. So you haven't done that, you can. Uh, some, who's Lana? Lana. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay. She said it should be right away. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. See you. Thank you. I feel mad.